My name is Sam. I'm one of the sales trainers here at Paytrace. Also here with me from Paytrace is Kevin Hurd, our ISV manager. Um, so this is what we call ISV Spotlight. We do these on a monthly occurrence and uh, the purpose for this is to introduce some of our integrations with Paytrace uh, where they basically have the floor to be able to talk about their solution, uh, how it operates, and really how it's going to benefit you and help you sell more accounts. So uh, with that, we've got about an hour of time here. Um, our partner today will take about half that time, maybe a little bit more to actually walk you through their solution. We'll do a quick demo uh, and then we'll have some time at the end to answer questions. Uh, as you do have questions pop up, don't feel like you need to hold that in, uh, get that out right away. So we've got uh, a Q and A feature as well as a chat feature. Feel free to type in your questions. We'll see that on our end and we will have that ready to go for the Q and A at the end. So send those through uh, as they pop up and we'll make sure we get those answered by the end of the call today. So uh, with that, that's basically all the housekeeping. Uh, today's agenda, we're going to be talking with IIG, Information Integration Group, and uh, their solution on Sage 100. So uh, with us today is Alex Bagdasarian, president of IIG, who's actually going to be doing the presentation. Um, he's going to open this up with a quick in introduction to their organization, how they were founded. It's actually pretty neat with their Sage background. Um, shifting away from that, Alex is going to walk us through a, uh, an overview of Sage 100 and how the integration works. And then most importantly, again, we're going to take the last few minutes to go over some questions. So we want to make sure everybody understands what this is, how it's going to benefit them. So definitely ask those questions. Uh, we want to, we want to make sure everybody feels good about this. All right. So with that, Alec, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Great. Share. All right. Go ahead and share your screen if you're ready. Perfect. Great. Hello, everyone. My name is Alec Bagdasurian. I'm with Information Integration Group. We're also known as IIG. We've been publishing enhancements for uh, the different ERP systems that we've offered throughout the year since 1991. Here today, we're going to look at our uh, enhancement for uh, credit, uh, credit card processing enhancements and the point of sale functionality that we've added to the Sage 100 product. So as I mentioned, we've been around since 1991, and we have about 40 plus employees, mostly technical, and we publish very many enhancements for Sage 100, from material planning and production management to warehouse automation, field service management, that part of it comes, the ability to, for folks in the field to select the credit card from the Sage 100 database and charge the card, rental management, and we support very many customers uh, in, in North America and very many resellers. So uh, quite a number of resellers have chosen to come to us because with most ERP systems, not every value added reseller is also a software developer. So they rely on companies like us to come to us to provide that additional uh, you know, resource to them and to their clients. So we many years ago, we added support for pay, pay, uh, pay trace card processor and what it does it lets you process uh, transactions and it uh, stores the uh, credit card information the secure wallet pro, uh, provided uh, as part of the, the setup um, here uh, we're looking at a, a point of sale uh, screen now I'm going to go over some of the enhancements so uh, these are enhancements that uh, we've added to this base Sage 100 product. In Sage 100, you could have uh, only one payment, one deposit process for a given uh, sales order transaction. So if you entered a deposit and you updated that deposit, uh, you were not able to come back in, for example, in a layaway setting and add a second payment or a third payment to that transaction. 
you're not able to apply more than one payment type. So a given deposit, either cash, check, credit card, we give them uh, the customers the ability to have a, for each application of payment to have a cash, check, MasterCard, up to four different payment methods uh, for each transaction entered. Uh, now the fast sales entry, the point of sale, gives the uh, cus our customers, our Sage 100 users, the ability to quickly process transaction and it's used to let them scan items, whether they have a scanner that they're scanning the item, do they have a fixed station with a scanner um, build as part of it where they just have the items uh, barcode, you know, uh, used uh, to scan the product in. So as part of that, it allows for fast, uh, high volume of transactions to be processed. Uh, as far as bank reconciliation, Sage 100 out of the box does not uh, uh, update the credit card information to bank reconciliation, we do that. So as we talked about the deposit processing and many sales order invoices, uh, we, as part of our solution, as part of our fast sales point of sales solution, we also uh, add cash drawer reconciliation. So you can open a cash drawer at 8 a.m. and you know enter the starting cash, and just the system would track what uh, money should be tracked in as part of the transactions processed on that uh, workstation. And, you, and of course, you can have multiple workstations linked to one register if you have two two uh, workstations that share a register. We would open the register, we support display poles, we print a, a nice receipt, like a receipt printer, a few inches long. Uh, also, uh, if you pro accept a deposit and you don't ship the product that day, we would post that amount to General Ledger as a liability. Sage out of the box does not do that, and you would have to you know, process the transaction manually to track that in the system, uh, uh, car terminals and, and so forth. So, so uh, again, this enhancement, uh, in addition to providing pay uh, phrase as an available merchant, it adds functionality to uh, the, the Sage 100 product. And folks have been using this for many, many years. I mean, Sage software themselves back in 1990s was using this enhancement in-house uh, to uh, basically process uh, credit card transactions in the system. Uh, so here we have what's called a cashier function. Uh, uh, so what this program allows customers to do if they have a retail setup where uh, there are folks at the counter that help the customers, but someone at a cashier box uh, takes the money, uh, it supports that functionality. And uh, additional functionality that it provides, even if uh, it's a distribution company, is the ability to take one payment, apply that one payment to some uh, sales orders that are open, to some invoices, leave some money on account, even uh, enter one payment and apply that payment to multiple customers. In, in the, uh, certain industries, for example, in construction, it's pretty common for customers uh, of our, our distribution, uh, Sage 100 installations, to have different customers' numbers set up for each building that they're working on. And when they wanna, so that, that allows them to track all the orders uh, that are processed for that one job site. Uh, so with this ability, we allow them to just cut one check or to apply one credit card uh, payment to uh, invoices that are stored uh, under different customer numbers and things of that sort. Yeah, so here we're showing you how you can transfer the money from one transaction to the other and you will even leave some money on account. Uh, this screen shows the register opening and closing and entering the opening cash. And at the end, when you're reconciling, when you're closing that batch, uh, be able to enter the actual cash that is in the drawer so the system would be able to print a report, uh, le, le, you know, to, to reconcile the funds collected versus the funds that are uh, actually in the, in the register. Uh, this is the register receipt when you do, do the closing of the batch. So for every transaction that is processed in the system, uh, we in the customer screen show, uh, show uh, the detail of all credit cards uh, processed so they, they'll be able to view those and see all the credit cards that they process. for them. So that's a quick PowerPoint presentation uh, view of the uh, screen. So with that, I'm going to switch 
uh, to my screen and make sure that I'm still showing that. View share, and I believe that still would switch to this. So this is the Sage 100 scheme. What I've done, uh, this is the Sage 100 menu, all the modules that are installed as part of this Sage 100 version 2018. So, it's 18. so you're looking at the, the latest version of Sage 100. And what I have here is I've created what's called a My, my Task menu. And I've uh, added here some of the programs that apply to what we are showing you today. So. Basically, uh, one thing I want to mention is that uh, the product, as it's uh, called today, uh, is labeled as, is branded as Sage 100 Cloud, and that refers to Sage 100 Cloud uh, connected, that functionality. But you also, as you talk to your customers, you may hear Sage 100C, you may hear Sage 100, you may hear Mass 90, you may hear Mass, mass 200. So mass Mass 90 and Mass 200 were the names that were used by State of the Art, uh, uh, the company who uh, was developing Sage 100, publishing the Sage 100 before Sage Software from UK purchased the, uh, the company. So uh, the product for many years now has been branded for Sage 100, as, as branded as Sage 100 and now as Sage 100 Cloud and before that was what Sage 100 C. So when you talk to customers, um, you know, any one of these names uh, would work. Uh, we, in addition, I wanted to point out that uh, we also do development for Acumatica. So if you ever come across a customer that is using Acumatica uh, and your ERP system and you wanted them to have uh, the ability to process transactions using Paytrace, we can also help you and you help your customers with that. Um, so we, uh, with, with that uh, said, I'm going to start showing you the program. So anything that I'm showing you here is developed in Sage 100 code set. So when we do development, the UI for the customer is the same. So whether it's adding the screen where you add additional credit card or the fast sales entry screen, uh, all our development is done in the uh, Sage 100 code set, and we, we support things like level three processing uh, um, for Sage 100. So here uh, we're going to go into the sales order entry program. And so, so the, the functionality uh, is, is I'm going to uh, show you two demonstrations, two processes, if you will. One is uh, the added functionality in Sage 100 distribution. Uh, programs or the entry uh, program. Uh, so this would be for someone that is not necessarily a point of sale customer, but wants additional functionality as part of the Sage 100 when it comes to processing credit cards. Then we will gonna do a different transaction and I'll take you through the, the fast sales entry point of sale and, and how that's been enhanced to allow for quick processing of transactions. So here, uh, this is again Sage 100, this is the user interface. I'm going to select the customer. Um, uh, so the customer number got selected. I'm gonna enter an item or two for the pro purpose of uh, having a charge for this transaction. So when I come to the totals tab now, this is where, uh, again, if I click on this deposit, uh, our window comes up that is developed just like any other Sage 100 scheme. So we easily support things like uh, swipe readers. So if you have a swipe reader and you charge the uh, swipe the card, the system would automatically load the credit card. But other than that, you could go through and uh, select an uh, Amex and basically uh, from the, uh, the different credit cards that that customer has on account, uh, select this one card. And again, this thing would have been automated uh, if you just uh, swipe the card to customers there or by, by clicking this on the select button, you can do it one step. So here I'm going to put $60 on this card and, and I'm gonna select a different card and uh, select the visa and show you how they're, they're able to basically, and they noticed that it automatically figured out that the remaining balance is $108. So I'm able to select that. And if I click on proceed, system would uh, go ahead and charge uh, both of these amounts. Now, okay, 
And of course, we're in the demo mode, so it's going through and it's showing us that uh, the you know it got processed. Uh, so if you click on the detail, it would uh, system would show you the two cars that were processed each with its amount. So now, depend, depending on whether uh, you, you're set up a pre-authorized an invoice in a batch mode or actually charging the card, you've uh, basically entered the transaction. So one of the things we're able to do then is to run this journal, which you would run at the end of each day, which basically uh, has the capability to uh, take all the deposits that you've taken as part of that day's activity and, and, and post them to the general ledger. So uh, this would be um, posting to the deposit uh, GL account number for any money. So, so the idea is that you've taken some money and this money gets posted to the deposit account. And if you were to invoice that order, if that product gets shipped that day, then this deposit is reversed and an invoice is created with a zero dollar amount. So that system is capable of handling uh, that function for us where uh, any the order that is not shipped on that day, the amount would get posted as a deposit and for anything that gets shipped, the deposit posting would get reversed and so forth. So, here, so you have the report by bank code because you can have different bank codes for different type of payments that you're processing in the system. So it prints all the reports that you could uh, have and basically this is the journal where it posts the transactions to the GL for us. So here we basically uh, started a sales order transaction and this payment, this processing of the payment would be done only one time at the end of the day. So it's not something that customers would be doing uh, after each uh, transaction right before they run the daily sales update to update the invoices they will run this deposit journal and the system would do that for it. so if i bring up that customer now in the customer entry program i will be able to see uh, both at the sales order level as well as uh, at the invoice level uh, overall for this customer what credit card payments we've applied to this customer and, and you, you'll have visibility over that. Of course, there are other reports that are printed in the system and or if I look at that as sales order invoice, I will be able to see the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and invoice that transaction uh, that we just created to show that that invoice gets created with $0 then, uh, then we will be able to go to some of the payment reports and, and view the, pay, uh, the, the payment generated for that. Okay. Except I don't think this is the transaction that we processed. Maybe it is. So uh, notice that uh, even if you've taken an amount, you can add a deposit, you could view the detail. Now this is a different transaction, but we could uh, add a deposit to this one if we, if we choose to do so by selecting the card that is uh, set up for, for, for this customer uh, as part of their setup. So the system would uh, easily allow us to uh, basically add additional cards. So be able to select that and see what card does this customer have. If it, they don't have any card, then uh, you, you'll be able to, to add a card depending on if the security is set up as such to, to add a card. Now, of course, you have the ability to come back to the customer uh, screen and of course my program is and and then so, so depending on the security uh, setting in, in stage 100, you're able to access the customer record from the invoice or adding the, uh, the additional uh, credit cards from the invoice entry versus adding it from the customer record. So that basically is a function that uh, is, so, so what I'm going to do for this purpose, I'm, I'm, I'm going to add a deposit, which is cash based so I can, basically process this transaction and we can process another transaction uh, for, the, for the customer that we processed earlier. 
uh, and and get that out of the out of the but but the system allows you again even if you've uh, uh, entered some amount or if you did not enter any amount when you process the sales order at the time of invoice entry when the invoice is generated perhaps you were not doing a ship complete you ship some quantities and at that time you have a uh, complete control or, or, or knowledge of exactly what amount got billed uh, uh, to to add that to the order and so we're going to do another sales order for that uh, the order date uh, so that probably would be the order that we entered uh, in the system so if i come back to my deposits I will see the detail and these are the two orders that we've entered. So you could see that you could add a deposit if the entire amount was not charged. And, and again, this is the order that you know we, we process and I can say ship complete and I can update this order uh, and get it out of the system. And notice that that invoice got generated as zero dollar because order was taken on it. So no, no invoice, no AR would be created for the order. So that's the order pick and pack process and how credit card is processed. Now you have the ability, as I've mentioned, is to process uh, credit cards and charge the cards in the batch mode. So if you're doing pre-authorization, then you could actually charge the card as part of the invoice batch charging. So folks are able to enter an order and pre-authorize the amount. And we even uh, set up systems where uh, a lot of off, oftentimes when p uh, customers accept an order, they just want to make sure that the card is valid and they would just pre-authorize a dollar before they start a transaction to make sure the card is valid and the, it has not expired. And at the end of the order, so right then they can tell the customer that they want another card or at the end of the order, we charge the entire amount, but the actual charging of the card happens in the batch mode when the invoices are generated. So system is pretty flexible as far as uh, working with the different workflows that the customers uh, you know, want, 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 want to set up in the system. So here uh, is, 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 is the basically the batch processing logic. So coming back to my task menu, I want to go into the fast sales entry uh, where we would basically see the uh, what we refer to as the point of sale. So this program has been a streamlined where you have buttons on the screen. As you click on the buttons, it would load activity into the system. So by clicking on the F5 or touching the screen, system loaded an invoice number. By clicking on, on that or touching the screen, system loaded the cash customer. So if you process a cash customer, system knows, and you have a setting to tell the system that these credit cards are not to be added uh, to the vault because these are one-time transactions. So notice that each time I type in a number, the quantity is automatically incremented one bit by one, which is your uh, credit card, uh, I'm sorry, your point of sale environment. So the customer is scanning at, uh, the screen and they load it. So things like, some of these other fields, if, if they, they don't need to be shown there because the total is displayed here, could easily be removed from the screen. So you have a, a lot of in. And actually, most of these other fields we easily take on and you're able to uh, even have buttons on the screen depending on the application where by touching those, we're able to load the items into the order. So usually uh, clients click on the to uh, total uh, or payments. And once they do that, again, this window comes up that we work with swipe readers and customer is able to uh, enter Visa or MasterCard or anything they want and process the card at, at the time uh, by selecting and the amount is loaded. And again, if it was multiple, they could do that. So if they can click on proceed, the card is charged. And when you click on accept, the system could automatically uh, print the invoice for you and, and get that transaction all updated. So one of the things that this uh, system is capable of doing as you process transaction is to further streamline. So in here, I had the system ask for uh, printers so to show you the the actual 
invoice, and this could be formatted as a much narrower invoice, so uh, it, it resembles the two, three inch uh, receipt printer. Uh, notice that once it got done with that transaction, it assigned the next transaction, and the program is sitting at the customer number field, so it can easily, again, if it's cash, you click on that, touch that, and then you start scanning the item number. You also have the ability to further streamline to change the behavior of the screen by basically having the system to automatically print the receipt so you do not have to go through some of the screens that I went through selecting a printer and a form. So notice here, you could set up uh, some values here, for example, whether or not you, you want to allow them to process sales or if it's a will call uh, counter, force full payments if you want to do that, who is your customer for cash customers? You can choose that. So if you have a customer number selected for that, that gets loaded. Here we let them uh, link the user log on to a salesperson and load that salesperson. So if it's a customer that both comes to the store as well as ordering online, the transactions for the, uh, the counter sales are loaded with a different salesperson as the salesperson that is here. So again, if I click here, uh, I'm loading my items. I'm scanning the quantity, and this time, if I click here and I select my visa, and as I mentioned, I could just do it in one step. If I select my visa and OK, it, I can proceed, and this time, as I click on accept, the system is not going to ask me any question, and it's just going to do everything, including the uh, printing of the receipt, opening of the cash drawer, and things of that sort, so that that whole process gets automated and more streamlined and the system control is uh, conducted. So we have very many companies that use this, have been using this for many years to do uh, counter sales, to do you know uh, as a, their, their cash sale from uh, the, the plumbing supplies to church supplies to many, many furnitures, to many different industries use this to, to let them process their transactions. So, as I get out, we have we talked about register, open, and close, which gives you the ability to open a register, close a register. So this, uh, you know, register, open, close gives you the ability to do that. Uh, register reconciliation, you have the ability to enter the register ID that you're working with and and close that. And as part of that, you know, so the system would see uh, what uh, the balance is. Global merchant maintenance. This is where you have the ability. To, add, to, to enter information about the pay trace, the login, and so forth and so on, that the system needs to do its job uh, and the global interface. So these are all settings. Again, all developed in the Sage 100 code set that it lets you set up the system with what, what exactly is it that we're providing as part of the system and how the system can communicate with pay trace. So as part of the, the same user interface, we're able to provide the additional functionality. So again, two type of functionality uh, as, it, uh, as, as it relates to wholesale distribution companies or any company would just allow you to have multiple payment applications to a transactions. Each app payment application, you could enter four, four different tender types, cash, MasterCard, Visa, break that into different entries. You have a point of sale which uh, lets you open a red close registers. It would uh, let you enter the that would let you enter the amount uh, uh, that that you're charging. And if it's cash, it will open the register. You will do the balance. It will change show the change due and so forth. So next, I want to show you uh, what's called uh, customer payment entry, which is the cashier function. And what this program does. Uh, it gives you the ability, as I mentioned, to uh, select a customer. And for selected customer, notice that it shows you all the activities. It would show you what sales orders uh, are in the system for that customer, each with their own balance, what invoices have been created that have not been updated, what AR invoices, updated invoices they are, each with their balance. And of course, you know, you insert a payment and you could select visa and enter the visa card and the amount that uh, you you want to apply maybe two hundred dollars and 
the system will allow you just uh, by clicking on these transactions, select the, what you want to apply. So this uh, transaction has a balance of $38. If I click that, that gets added and it shows me the available balance. Uh, I can click that and I can click partial if I want to just apply the remaining $161.80 uh, to it or I can click here to take another dollar from there. I can click here and take another $60 from there uh, to process all the transactions that I want to process. And you know, it could leave the, the remaining amount on an account or I could just select the transaction and click partial and enter that remaining balance of the $15.32 for this. So, and now I've applied my entire $200. So this could have been different payments. If I click, uh, you know, uh, here, so if I accept this, the system basically uh, would let me print the receipt if I want to give to the customers to what, what, uh, tra what invoices and transactions we applied their $200 to. So that's basically, and of course, you want to update it right then. You can, if not, you can update them all at the end of the day as part of the, uh, the end of day updates. If I bring up uh, again that I can, uh, we, we also have the ability to insert the uh, uh, card amount and, and basically here, uh, and apply part of it, transfer part of it to another customer. So the system allows you to uh, again, enter one payment and apply it to uh, to different uh, transactions. So basically, what we've done uh, with this enhancement, we've done three things. Uh, one is for your distribution customers, add the ability to process uh, the, uh, pay, uh, their credit cards using PayTrace. Uh, we support level three processing. They could uh, let uh, do process layaway and things of that sort by just having the customer come back and have yet another application of uh, money on that uh, transaction. We will do all the postings to the general ledger and bank reconciliation so, it, so it's all tracked in the system. For folks who have a counter and uh, want to uh, process transactions for the counter, we have the fast sales entry and the folks that want to do cashier functions, we support that again. Uh, and again, this is not uh, for cashier function. Uh, it is cashier, but, but in addition to that, if you have an application, if you have a business that uh, a payment should be applied to both uh, open sales orders, invoices to different customers, this program has the functionality to do that. So with that, uh, I wanted to I failed to mention that do this at the beginning. I want to thank Kevin and Sam and everyone attending for giving me this opportunity to show our enhancements to you. This is a quick overview. Of course, we would gladly uh, uh, show you or this your any one of your prospects, any one of your customers, a more detailed demo after discussing their specific needs, set up scenarios where we're showing uh, the, their exact application with some pictures of their products added to the fast sales entry. So you could click, touch those and load the items into the order. So with that said, uh, Sam, Kevin, I'm, I'm done with the quick overview and the PowerPoint. I can gladly answer any, answer any questions anyone has about what we were able to see today. Sorry, I was muted there for a sec. I appreciate that, Alec. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for the uh, for the presentation and, and definitely the demo. That makes it a lot easier um, for everybody to kind of understand how the solution really operates. So it's it's great having that type of visibility. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen here. And then, Alec, I may need to pass this back to you. If we need to answer any questions by showing a demo. We can okay. go ahead and do that. Uh, but I want to go ahead and, and put up just some contact information to begin with. So uh, feel free to jot this down. If you guys have any questions on Paytrace or, or any Paytrace integration types of questions, contact us here on this page. Um, Alec and his team are more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have related to the integration uh, as well as pricing. That's usually one of the biggest questions that we get on these is how much does this cost? Um, 
Alec and his team will work with you guys directly um, with regards to the pricing of this solution. So um, email and phone number are listed. Uh, Alec, I'm gonna tell everybody, feel free to hit, hit you up on uh, all those types of questions. So um, looks like we have a few questions coming in. Uh, we've got about just under 25 minutes here to answer them. Uh, so I wanna make sure that gets knocked out. Um, so St Steve looks like uh, he has a lot of great questions here. Uh, first one's regarding the versions of Sage and what this is compatible with. Um, so Alec, if you wouldn't mind just kind of going over again what, what some of the version integrations are available, and then specifically, Steve is asking, does this include Sage X3 ERP? So, so the answer to that question is that uh, we work with uh, different versions of the Sage 100. As I mentioned, Sage 100 uh, has the, the name Sage 100 C, Sage 100 Cloud, Sage 100, and so. But uh, it we primarily work with the Sage 100 and Mass 9200 product. Sage has other products like Sage 300, Sage X3, Intact that we do not integrate with. Perfect. But as versions of Sage 100, it's version 2018, 2017, 2015, we will work with it. Because with Sage software, there are very many clients that are an older version. And, and because we've had this product for so many years, we're able to even offer this solution to someone who's not upgraded their Sage for five years, seven years. It's not paying Sage an annual maintenance. We can still go and offer us a, a product that works with their version of Sage 100. Great, great. And just just to, to kind of to, uh, go go off of that answer. Now, Alec, you guys have a, have a pretty strong history in, in Sage, correct? Can you, can you just kind of describe your guys' background and, and IIG's relation with Sage? So we, we, we've always been one of, and are one of the largest publisher of enhancements for Sage 100. And then we had at some point over 150 enhancements for Sage 100 and uh, our WMS, our field service, our rental, uh, are very popular product. In addition, uh, very many customers who have uh, basically outgrown some of the standard uh, uh, functionality in Sage 100 and want the system tweaked, they can come to us and we form alliances with uh, resellers and, 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 uh, and develop a, a solution specific to their customers, whether it's manufacturing, scheduling machineries, whether it's injection molds, whether it's uh, food processing, uh, whether it's subscriptions, where, uh, you know, it, it happens very often when, in addition to the credit card processing, there's also a need to set up some customers, whether it's an alarm company that uh, needs to be uh, billing for monitoring, whether it's a rental company that has products in, in, in a, at, at a customer side and needs to generate a recurring uh, uh, invoice for rentals, whether it's uh, companies that have subscriptions and they want to renew subscriptions and charge is uh, using ACH uh, charging the credit cards and things of like that sort. We, we do a lot of work with Sage 100. So if you ever have a situation that there is a need to uh, enhance Sage 100 so the application then would be able to utilize pay, uh, uh, pay trace, please feel free to just uh, uh, schedule a call and we gladly would come in and talk to that uh, customer prospect, answer any questions that they have about what the options are for implementing a solution for them. That's awesome. And, and guys on the call right now, I want to, um, I just want to call out here, Alec and his team at IIG, they're what's considered Sage master developers. Um, that's a pretty cool title, right? So, so when you're working with, with this team on your Sage integrated solutions, you can be pretty comfortable that, that this is a credible integration that these guys know exactly what they're doing and that you can really, rely on this integration. Uh, so I just want to call that out. Yes, the term is used in the Sage 100 community, but it, it may not be used by others. That's why I did not mention, but it's yes, we're a gold certified master developer for Sage product. And a, mm -hmm. again, a Sage 100, Sage uh, software themselves were using our WMS and our credit card and third party shipping system integrations in-house for processing some of their transactions for years. 
Awesome. Um, another question coming through here, Alec, um, again from Steve. This is a question about uh, Sage merchants that currently have unrelated add-on modules with Sage. Um, do you know what, what sort of impact that has on um, this integration? Uh, so years ago, that was a much bigger issue. Nowadays, if I understand your question, uh, your question is if the customer has other enhancements, can we still offer this solution? And in 95% of the case, unless someone has done something very strangely, uh, we have no problem. We have, uh, we work very closely with companies like DM2 that have a petroleum solution and uh, our solution works with uh, the, uh, you know, with their uh, customers, we have uh, customers that are, are using different uh, systems from multi-currency to others and our credit card enhancements just work very comfortably with them. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, it looks like we keep getting some, some questions on versions. Um, with um, Sage 100 online, um, is this integration also available for that, or is it only for the native installed version? Well, remember, Sage 100 uh, does not really have a version that Sage themselves, they hosted. They, their products are called Sage 100 and Sage 100C, mm -hmm. where the consumption model, the, the life purchasing of the license is based on SaaS model subscription. But as far as the deployment of the product, Sage does not offer a, 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 you know, a, a deployment option. So the customers, whether it's private cloud of their own or on their own internal servers, uh, we install the software and we would, would comfortably work with either one of those, whether it's, uh, whether it's a, a private cloud or installed in-house. Great, thanks for the clarification on that, Alec. Um, Another question coming in here about kind of the, the, the timeline of the integration. Can you talk about, you know, if, if somebody comes to IIG and, and has a merchant that wants to integrate with Paytrace, what, what, what's kind of the, the, the timeline involved with that? So typically, if it's not the point of sale, because when it gets to the point of sale, you're talking about cash registers and display poles and receipt printers and things of that sort. Uh, some of that setup may take some time. But for a distribution company to implement uh, the software so they can switch to pay trace and start using trade trace, it's just a matter of a few weeks. Perfect. That's awesome. Uh, now, a couple of questions here that I'll go ahead and tackle. Uh, one of them is regarding uh, pay traces level two and level three capabilities. And that's something that Alec had brought up a few times during this presentation. Now, guys, I just want to make you know, clarify this because this is a huge benefit of using Paytrace with this integration. But if, if any of these merchants that are using Sage 100, if they're taking business cards, corporate cards, purchasing cards, you know, any types of that commercial card subset, right? Paytrace is, is using, leveraging our level two and level three um, interchange optimization tools in the back end. So rather, regardless, they're using Sage 100 as their front end solution and Paytrace as the back end solution. As long as that transactions, right, it's integrated with Paytrace, we're still going to be adding that level two and level three data to the transactions and helping them qualify for that, um, that best possible rate. Yeah. So, and, and we do that as part of when we're providing a, the packet the, you know, for each transaction, the additional fields that are required from sales tax to freight to boxing, we provide that additional set of data to Paytrace, so then Paytrace can use that additional data provided as part of that communication to do what's needed. Exactly, so it's, it's covering level three really on all bases, so um, that's, uh, that's pretty phenomenal. And as far as the, right, the encryption on the cards, right, uh, these guys can, these merchants can pull customers and leverage Paytrace's vault. So these customers can be securely hosted within Paytrace and um, right, using tokenization. And that's going to be what IIG can reference using Sage 100. So as far as the encryption goes on those cards, everything's very secure. All right. So let's see what else we have here. Some great questions, guys, so far. 
Uh, another version question uh, regarding Sage X3 and Sage 500. Um, are those supported at all through IIG or is this, uh, are those kind of uh, out of scope? The, we had for years a Sage 500 integration, but we, we have not, you know, sold that for many years. And the Sage X3, the answer is no, we never did develop that for that. Perfect. All right, guys, keep those questions coming. Let's see here. Well, I think we're answering most of them. Uh, now, as far as, um, you know, demos or trainings or resources, webinars, Alec, does, does your team offer any sort of, of resources like that? Certainly, we would put, uh, take part in any sales process and give a demo of the software to your customer, discuss possible uh, changes that is needed to maybe fine tune the system to take care of the exact specific needs. Training our folks here, provide all of that training, all of that hand holding uh, that is needed to either set up the cashier function or the point of sale terminal or the you know credit card processing uh, enhancement training that is needed. Awesome. That's great. Those are fantastic resources to have, especially for some of these complex merchants, right? Um, it's great to have that kind of support. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and leave this open for another moment. If any other questions pop through, we'll make sure those are answered. Um, I just want to say thank you to Alec um, for, for uh, presenting on this month's ISV Spotlight. This is very informative stuff. Uh, for those of you on the call, we will have this recorded. So if, uh, if any of your colleagues wanted to check this out or couldn't, or you think this would be beneficial to share with your team, uh, we will have this available in the next few days. Feel free to uh, email us at sales training at Paytrace or integrations at paytrace.com um, for a copy of this recording. Uh, again, any questions uh, regarding sales or just general inquiries, right? Give IIG a call. These guys are uh, phenomenal at their support. And, and Jay is at extension 1227 and Mark at extension 1225. And I'm at extension 1222. So any one of us can help or just ask for sales when you call in. Uh, someone always answers the phone when you call our office. You just ask for sales and we'll I'll take care of you. There you go. That's awesome. We don't have too many people on these calls that really want to give out their direct information. So just the fact that you're willing to share that uh, is, is pretty phenomenal, Alec. Thank you. Um, so uh, just so you all know, we'll go ahead and close this out here in a minute. Uh, we will be sending out an email to you with a survey. We'd love to get some feedback uh, on this presentation specifically and then on some future spotlights, right? How can we improve this? Um, what are some things that you guys really liked? So. Um, Keep that in mind, that should be coming out here shortly. Um, and again, thank you everybody for taking some time out on your Tuesday. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week and I uh, hope to see you on some future calls. Thank you all for the opportunity and looking forward to working with you and answering any questions you may have. All right, bye all.